going to be paint paint matching the fender flares on the 2020 that's over there that's currently waiting for the headlights to be paint matched and get the switch back installed and my LOI if you watched the last episode you would have found out that we still have not figured out how to get the thing running I think it's the fuel injection control module itself that needs to be replaced so Keep on the lookout for that. Also, real quick, show season is coming up. Head over to jwmoresportsco.com and get your rock lights and wheel lights before it's too late. I know you guys are all trying to get ready for Daytona and other shows coming up. I mean, me, myself, I'm trying to get my 2020 L5P ready for Daytona. But not only that, a week before Daytona or two weeks before Daytona, there is a show in Atlanta. I think it's going to be one of the biggest truck slash car shows we've ever had in Atlanta. Super excited for it, super stoked for it. I am trying to get my truck ready for that. So the Daytona crunch time is real right now. I mean, obviously I got the wheels and tires set up and I'm just waiting for the lift kit to get here. And as soon as that comes in, I have to get myself on the schedule with Elite Innovations. Also got a couple of parts coming from Kryptonite. So huge shout out to Kryptonite. I will show you guys next week when the parts come in but I am so excited to have those components on my truck. I've always liked to upgrade the front end whenever I do lift kits and stuff just because I feel safer and I just like the way the truck handles whenever I upgrade front end components when I'm going with bigger lift, wheels, tires, especially when I'm going wider. Right now, we are going to be painting the fender flares. It's been long overdue. I've, I've just been slacking and thankfully, we have a set of fender flares that were given to us from Matt for God for Country. So huge shout out to Matt for allowing me to pick up his old set of fender flares. I wanted a spare set of fender flares mainly because I didn't know like how long I would go without fender flares. Fortunately, this truck is down and even if that truck wasn't down, I just didn't want to have a truck sitting in my driveway with like fender flares missing for a couple days and not be able to drive at all. That's why we need to get this thing freaking fixed so that way I can really get the project rolling on the 2020. So first things first, we gotta clean up the garage just a little bit. Uh, I, need, I need some room to set up my little paint booth right here and not get any overspray on the trailer. So we're gonna tarp that up. We're gonna put some tarp over there. I think that right there is a pretty good setup. Not too bad for DIY. Next, man, this thing's covered in pollen and all kinds of dirt and debris from sitting in my garage and sitting in Matt's garage. So we gotta get this thing cleaned up and then we're gonna scuff it up just a little bit. Might not even have to do that. And then we are going to spray an adhesion promoter. Then we're gonna do the sandable primer and then we are going to sand it with, I believe, 600 grit, and then it'll be nice and smooth, which will get us ready for painting. Soapy water. Got everything wiped down, looks way better. There's definitely small scratches and scuff marks just because it's been laying around for so long. But doesn't really matter because we're gonna 
spray with sandable primer and man this thing is going to be glossy when we get done with it it's going to look really good here we have the adhesion promoter i had to go to o'reilly's to get this you can also get it from the website where i bought this stuff from so the next thing we're going to do after adhesion promoter is sandable primer and i got it from automotive touch-up basically primer paint and clear coat all were purchased from automotive touch-up and we are back it's nighttime now but the fender flares have been primered i know in the video right now it probably looks like it's been painted but it's black primer and next thing we have left is to sand everything down and then we got our base coat and then after that we got clear um a lot of people recommend 600 but I don't think I had any 600, but thousands should work. So let's go ahead and sand everything down and then move on to the painting stage. This is honestly when I wish I have like a videographer so that way they can get some cinematic shots of me sanding. But for now, it's just gonna be this. All right, got these two all sanded down. I gotta say, these are super, super smooth. There is no grooves. It filled in all the grooves that we needed to fill in. And it is just super smooth. I can't wait for the finish because it's gonna be a very glossy finish with no bumps that you would expect on these fender flares because they are textured kind of like the toe mirrors. That sandable primer did a really good job of filling in three full cans and, uh, and a half. So I used a lot, a good bit of primer just to get it super thick so that way I could sand it all down and smooth it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish those two and then we'll get started on the painting. Everything has been sanded down. Now I gotta go get the paint, my base coat, and we are ready to start painting. We got our base coat painted on here. I think I did about maybe three to four coats of paint. Oh man, I totally missed a spot right here. Uh, what I did was on uh, some of these spots that had the runs, I went over with 1000 grit sandpaper, which I need to do, I need to sand that down because I've been doing this at night. <laughs> what a difference it makes having sunlight coming through the garage to be able to allow you to see what you're doing um i looked over all the fender flares last night totally missed that one and what happens with that is i'm actually not a huge huge fan of the automotive touch-up spray can like i thought i would be um what happens is when i'm spraying sometimes the buildup causes drips and it will get onto the surface that you're painting I guess it wouldn't be a big deal if you like hang it up somewhere, but the way I have it set up, you know, when you're spraying, you don't realize it's dripping and it falls onto the surface of the, uh, of the product you're painting and it can, it can mess it up. So we're just gonna have to sand that down and we're back wet sand to that spot and we do not see the drip on the paint anymore. So we are good to go. Wiped it down one more time. So there's, there shouldn't be any kind of dust. So we should be ready for clear coat. Make sure you have your respirator. I know a lot of people out there paint in well ventilated area and don't use a respirator, but this stuff is no joke. So make sure you are in somewhat ventilated area and also use a respirator because like I said, this stuff, when you buy it, it makes you sign a waiver saying that you will use some sort of respirator 
or a protection before using this. And also what I noticed is this thing is a clear with hardener built into it. And basically what it does is you, t you take the cap off and you, you press that in. And what it does is it pops the hardener and mixes it with the clear in the bottle. With this thing though, however, you have to use all of it or else it'll go bad. But I did learn a little trick from Phil from Fast Headlights. He said, put this in the freezer. If you put it in the freezer, it'll slow down the process. It'll slow it down so much, it'll essentially stop the process. So if you have one of these and let's say you're paint painting something small and you hate to throw the bottle away just because you're done with it, put it in the freezer and you can, you can save it for next time. Finally finished with the clear coat. I am so sorry guys that I didn't get to film any of it. I had actually put my GoPro right there and I could not find it for the life of me. It happens all the time whenever I'm working on projects that I just happen to always, I always set my camera somewhere when, when I'm working on a project and I always forget where I put it. So sometimes I, I, I don't get to film everything. But this is after two cans of the 2K clear coat. Oh my goodness, I think it looks freaking killer. Only thing is I do have like a little dust right there. I don't know if that landed after it hardened or if it's in the clear coat now. So uh, I'm still probably gonna wet sand and buff it out. But so far, I'm pretty impressed. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I think it's gonna look pretty good. By no means this is perfect, but for doing it in the garage DIY with spray uh, with a rattle can, I, I gotta say it looks pretty good. So. We'll let it dry and harden for 24 hours, and then we'll go ahead and put it on the Duramax. Here we have the Boost Auto Parts, Fender Flare lights. Huge shout out to Boost Auto Parts for sending me this part. They sent it actually a couple months ago. I just haven't had the time to paint these. And now that they're painted, we are ready to put the Boost Auto Parts ones because, well, I'll show you guys the ones I got now. Got my headlights color matched with Phil, or from Phil, I should say. Yes, that is the stock fender flare lights, and it's got tint over it, but you can see the tint is peeling, and honestly doesn't look as good as the gloss black that Boost Auto Parts sells. <laughs> nice oh yeah way better all right that looks way way better look at that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a quick little wash and then i'll definitely show you guys the whole truck because it's it's too filthy right now all right here you can see i tried using my polisher at the house it's it's just way too big it really didn't cut anything and with the with my polisher i only used this which wasn't uh, it didn't cut deep enough so today we're going to start with that and finish with this and see how it turns out step one mcguire's 105 ultra cut compound that really brought the shine back. It's actually pretty glossy compared to how hazy this looks from wet sanding. So pretty excited to see how it would actually turn out. I did notice a good bit of orange peel, but not too bad for doing it in the garage with a rattle can.
Look how glossy that looks compared to that. Got everything polished up. I will need to wet sand again because there's some orange peel that I do not like. So we'll be wet sanding with 1500 and 2000 sometime later down the road, like before Daytona. But right now it'll do. This one turned out really good. This one looks the best, I think, in my opinion. Still gonna need a little bit more wet sanding. Uh, and then I gotta repolish, recut and everything. But let me show you guys the Boost Auto Parts. Oh, look at that. That matches the mirror and the cab lights and the switchbacks that are on the truck. So yeah, that looks really good. It matches the back the black fender flares pretty good. And if you go look at Mark's truck, we actually did a full install video, so make sure to go check that out. But Mark's truck has the frosted one with white fender flares and that looks really good on his. Everything was painted and stuff with, with a rattle can at my house. And as you can see, it turned out pretty good. I would say the overall cost was maybe about a $150 to maybe 200 on the top end and uh, polishing compound and stuff like that I already had. So it kind of saved me money there. But if you had to go out and get the drill and the pads and the compounds and everything, I would say you're probably looking at about 200 to 250 on the higher end. But overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the way it turned out. Um, let's see. Only thing is, I am going to be redoing this fender flare. I didn't even really try to polish it up because, as you can see, uh, there's a little crease right there. That's probably from um, when Matt was removing the fender flares off of his truck. He, he probably pulled on it and it creased up and I could see why I could see how that happened because removing the stock fender flares It was uh, it was kind of pain in the butt back here and also If you look right here It looks like whenever I wet sanded the paint and we're back wet sanded that spot. I actually Sanded through the paint and went to the primer. So that is my gray primer so I'm going to be using my fender flares, my stock fender flares, and redoing this side. Christian, <clears throat> cue the outro for me. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed these uh, sexy, smooth flares. And uh, be sure to come back next video. Like, comment, and subscribe. Like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs>